This is the beginning of chapter one, which is introduction to relations and functions. So we'll give you a little preview of what this chapter contains, and then we'll start with section 1.1. We'll start out with the concept of relations, which is really just equations in two or more variables. A special case of relations is functions, and then we'll study domain and range of both relations and functions. Then we'll cultivate the attitude of mathematical playing and study different kinds of functions and relations, one-to-one -one functions, inverse functions, power, exponential, or logarithmic. We'll learn how to put these together and combine them together and create piecewise functions. A special case of piecewise functions would be absolute value functions. And restricting the domain of these functions can create sequences and series. So that's what the whole chapter is all about. Let's cultivate some playing attitude towards mathematics. I want you to pause the video here and think about what do the following words mean to you in English language and also whatever current mathematical knowledge you may have. You can use that, but just one or two sentences for each of these words, relations, equations, and functions. So go ahead, pause the video here, see what you can do. If your instinct says, I'll just wait for the teacher to tell me, I want you to stop that. And here you will see this icon. It will say, breathe. In the textbook, you will see this icon regularly throughout different sections. And it's just to remind you of your mindfulness practice. Bring your whole essence and just breathe, focus, and write down what these words, relations, equations, and functions mean to you. Go ahead, pause the video here, and let's see what we got. So when you think of the word relations, what came to your mind? Some of you said, well, I can think of relations between people like mother-father or father-daughter. You can also think of relations with quantities that we observe in nature. For example, if you don't have enough rain, then you might encounter drought climate change versus temperature. So there are a lot of things that are related to each other. That means things that are connected to each other. You could have two things related to each other. You could have multiple things related to each other. Equations, what came to your mind? Equations, automatically you are thinking the equal to sign. You might think of equations in one or two variables like what you see here, 3x plus 5 equals 2y minus 1 over 4 minus y. So equations could just be algebraic expressions that are equated to each other. What about functions? When you think of functions, what comes to your mind? Well, in English, a function stands for like a party, graduation ceremony, wedding ceremony. So functions could mean all those things. What do these things mean in mathematics? Well, let's look at some examples first, and then we'll do formal definitions. You can think of examples like profit of a company as time goes by. You can think of movie tickets sold versus profit made by a movie. You can think of number of bacteria as time goes by or viruses. You can think of our heart rate as we do workouts, weightlifting, running, whatever workout you do. You can think of unit conversions in physics and chemistry. So the examples for relations are endless. So a relation is exactly what we just described, but in mathematical terms, you will say a relation is a directed rule or correspondence between two sets of objects or quantities. You have a starting object of the directed rule, which is called the input, and the related object in the second set of the relation is called the output. If you look at the set of all inputs, that's called the domain of the relation, and the set of all outputs is called the range of the relation. If you think of a relation like, say, take your class, for example, where each student in the class is the input 
and then their final grade is the output. So then the range would be set of all final grades that were awarded, and hopefully the range would be A or B grade, and the input is all the students that are in the class who received a grade. So that's how you do domain and range of relations. There are different ways that we can use to represent our relations. One of them is called the set notation. In the set notation, connecting elements in two sets using arrows, or you can represent them as order tuples separated with commas, and then enclose them in curly brackets. So for example, in the relation f below, you have objects in A are related to objects in set B, and the representation of relations is through arrows going from objects in A to objects in B. So you have small letter i, arrow going from that to object 9, which is in set B. Letter C goes to 3, and so on. You can see capital B and capital H that are in A do not have any corresponding elements in set B. So the domain for us here for F is going to be the I, C, F, and E. And in the range, it will be 3, 5, 6, 9. We can also represent the function f as tuplets. So you have curly brackets, and then you have pairs i, comma 9, c, comma 3, and so on. They are separated with commas. So each corresponding relation, i and 9, is one pair, c and 3 is another pair, and so on. So that's two different ways that you can use sets to represent relations. In the tabular notation, you are using data to represent in rows and columns. The rows are individual items that are connected to each other. The columns, the first column represents your input, and the second column could represent your output. You can also represent your relations in the graphical notation. In the graphical notation, we can use the Cartesian coordinate system in two or more dimensions and then display our relations where the input could be one of the x or y axis and the output is the other axis if you are in two dimensions. Verbally, you can use sentences. For example, number of bacteria double in size after every 30 minutes from an initial population of 300. Algebraic relations then you're representing them in form of an algebraic equation in two or more variables. So we just finished looking at how to represent relations in all these different ways. Let's revisit the set notation and then see what kind of questions can we ask to play with it. So let's take a look at that again. So you can see how in order to be relations, we had arrows going from A to B. Part of playing in mathematics means asking questions, posing questions, and wondering. So of course, a natural question to wonder here is what? Go ahead, pause the video here and see what another question could we ask looking at this picture right here. One natural question would be, can we reverse the arrows? And if we do that, what do we get? As you can see that when we reverse the arrows, we just get a different kind of relation. So again, it's a relation, but this time the input are elements of set B and the output are elements of set A. Remember, before our relation F went from objects in A to objects in B. This relation is of importance and is called the inverse relation. So we'll make a definition, and then we'll come back to this example to look for domain and range. So if we reverse the arrows, as you saw in the example above in the relation, it generates a relation which we call an inverse relation. So we'll use the notation f and a negative 1 on its head to denote the inverse relation. And this is just the name of the relation in which we switch the arrows of the original 
relation. So now we have in the inverse relation, you have objects in B corresponding to objects in A. So for example, in the original relation, I went to 9. Now 9 will go to I. So the domain of the original relation then became the range of the new inverse relation. And the range of the original relation became the domain of the new inverse relation. So see if you can find the domain and range of this relation and also find the inverse relation and its domain and range. So go ahead, pause the video here and see what you can do. Assuming you've come back, let's take a look together. Since in the original relation all the inputs landed on the output of 1, the output of 1 will now be related to all the inputs from the original relation. So we reverse the arrows, and so the 1 in the set B will now correspond to outputs of 0, 6, 7, and 9 in the set A. So now our domain in the original, which is 0, 6, 7, 9, becomes the range in the inverse relation, and the range of the original, which was just 1, will become our domain in the inverse relation. This is a good opportunity to review writing relations in all the different representations. So in the set notation, we'll write G and curly brackets and separate it with pairs, ordered pairs, so 0, 1, 6, 1, 7, 1, 9, 1. And then the inverse relation would be similar pairs except the input output are reversed. So it'll be 1, 0 instead of 0, 1, and 1, 6 instead of 6, 1, and so on. We can also write them in tabular notation. So we would have our first column to be the input for G. So 0, 6, 7, 9, and the output would be 1, because all the outputs were 1 for G. And in the G inverse, we would have to switch the columns. We can also represent them in the Cartesian coordinates. So G would be the coordinates you see here, and then G inverse would be the coordinates that you see in the second graph with the red dots. So we've now looked at relations and inverse relations. Now we look at another special kind of relation in which every single input in the domain has a unique output. Such relations are called functions, and that's what we'll see in our next lecture.